Okay, now that we poured a bunch of these round head jigs, I'm going to show you how to powder coat paint them basically three different ways. A single color, which is going to be a bulletproof paint job. Actually, all three of these are going to be bulletproof paint jobs. You are not going to be able to wear this paint out. You're going to have to lose the jig. The other two ways are two different ways to do bi-color jigs. We're going to try to duplicate Gulp's pink shine color combination and also the Fire Tiger, two colors we did really well with last year. And I'll show you several tips and tricks along the way to help your jig painting go perfectly. Links to the entire jig making series playlist is going to be up there in the cards. We're covering everything from cleaning up scrap lead all the way to tying up some of the best jigs you will ever fish with, which you'll be even more proud of because you made them. Do yourself a favor, cast this to your TV and watch it that way on the big screen. It'll be a lot easier to see stuff. Hit that subscribe button down there. Don't forget the bell icon so you don't miss any videos. Check this out. Powder coating your jigs is going to make these things so incredibly durable when they're bouncing off of rocks and coral and seashells and stuff like that that you're not ever going to have to worry about wearing out the paint. You're going to lose these jigs before you wear the paint off of them, which is what makes powder coating so perfect for salt water and offshore fishing. So let me show you all the stuff we're going to use here in this video. Some of this stuff I built myself. You're going to need a rack to hang your finished jigs on for baking. A standard heat gun, which you can pick this up anywhere, and I'll put links down in the description below for all of this stuff as well. A bubbler. This is just a simple air bubbler for a fish aquarium. You can pick these up anywhere. Barlow's Tackle has this stuff too. And in fact, Barlow's Tackle has the other very important thing. I built my own fluid bed and I will show you how this is put together in this video uh, here in just a second. But Barlow's also has these ready to go. If you don't want to worry about building your own, you can just buy them from them already done. And of course, an assortment of Protect powder paints. These paints are available in bulk one pound cans and of course, a little two ounce bottles in all your favorite colors. And this patented tool for getting the paint out of the bottles into your fluid bin and out of your fluid bin back in your bottles. I sell this very high quality patented tool for about $10 a piece. I know, I know, just kidding. Let's start with the fluid bin and how you can make one of these at home. This is very important to keep that paint fluffed up so your jigs get painted evenly and quickly every time. All right, all I've done here is I've taken a short piece of PVC pipe with a little cap and put it on the bottom of a coupling. I've used an air fitting for a fish aquarium pump inside. Just drilled a little hole that just literally sticks in the hole, no big deal. And it has a nice little knob to control your volume of air. This is also very important because too much air and all the paint will just volcano out of this thing. Inside the coupling, just as important, is an air diffuser. I have tried all kinds of things as an air diffuser. And believe it or not, this is just a simple piece of newsprint cut to fit. Any newspaper, doesn't matter. I've tried coffee filters. I've tried paper bags. I've tried, geez, regular notebook paper. But somehow or another, newsprint seems to be the best thing for fluffing up that paint. Of course, the top half is just another short piece of PVC pipe glued in place. Deep enough for your paint and for your jig to fit all the way in. This goes together real simple when you can get your paper lifted up. So that just sits right in there like that. Screw it together. Doesn't have to be farmer tight. So the way this works is real simple. Put your paint in there first. Make sure you have enough paint in there for your jig to get all the way submerged in it. Go ahead and hook your tubing up, plug in your bubbler, and then adjust the air valve on the side to where the paint just starts to fluff up. Watch it closely. Don't put too much in it at once. You see it start to rise. You can't see it on camera, but I can see it slowly rising. And there you go. You'll see the air start to pop. And now when you shake it, it looks like fluid. Hence the term fluid bed. And what does that do for you? It makes it to where when you put your jig in there, it goes right in real easy, all the way down, and you don't have to worry about pushing it through the paint because it's all fluffed up. So fluid bed, very important. A nice set of little needle nose vice grips really helps with this because it gives you a way to hang on to your jig without getting burned. Heat guns are hot. Think about your setup before you fire this thing up. We have this thing set up on the workbench with a cord run so it's going to be real hard to knock this thing over. These things are hot. And you definitely don't want them knocking over into things that they could melt or hurt. We have a little rack ready to go. We're going to do a couple single colors first. Heat your jig on high for a 20 count. Four, five, two, six. 20 seconds usually does it for a two ounce jig. And the paint, knock it off. And that dude is painted. If it looks a little powdery, don't worry about it. 
You can put it back on the heat gun or just bake it because when you bake it anyway, it's going to smooth right out for you. Hang it up on the rack. Perfect. See how nice and shiny that one came out? So single color is that easy. Just hang them up in your rack. We'll bake them here in just a bit. Now here's the first easy way to get a two-tone color jig. Go ahead and get your second color, not your primary color, but your second color. Go ahead and shake that up unless you have a second fluid bed, which really would be handy. You have that all fluffed up and ready. Get this sucker plenty hot now. We're going to go about 25 seconds on this one. And now this one you want to be fairly quick with. And all I'm going to do is basically make this a two-tone jig. With a quick dip in the white and a quick dip in the pink. Now this is going to be my pink shine jig. The pink isn't exactly true to color yet, but it will be after baking. And look at how it makes that really cool edge all the way around really neat way to do two-tone jig heads. Let's do another one. Get it good and hot. About 25 seconds worth. All right. Quick dip in the white. Quick dip in the pink. Now here's something to watch out for for this kind of powder paint. Look at your jig eye. Make sure that that's clear. In this case it's clear but it's a little on the small side. You need to make sure that's open because you cannot poke that through with a fish hook on the boat. You'll have to take a drill and drill that sucker out. So that thing's closed up pretty good. We need to open that up. So if you get one that paints closed like that, just make sure you got it hot. Use any old thing you can stick through there. Clean out your eye. What a cool looking two-tone jig, huh? Now here's a quick tip on your rack. Make sure your jigs don't touch each other while they're wet or they will stick together and it'll kind of mess the paint up a little bit. Hang them up several inches apart and when they cool off you can slide them closer together so you can get more on the rack and more into your toaster oven for baking. Alright, here's another way to do a really cool two-tone finish on your jig heads. We're going to stick with the pink shine for this one and I'll show you what I mean. First we do the primary color, same as before. There's our white. Now the fun part, while it's still hot, take a paintbrush, dip that in your secondary color, and just splash a little bit over your jig. That's going to make a very unique color on that jig. And you can do this any way you want. What we're trying to do here is mimic the pink shine color on the pink shine gulps. We did really well with those last year. Now I'm making me some jig heads to match. Let's do another one like that. That was pretty cool. It'll be kind of quick with that secondary color for sure. Not bad. That's going to look pretty cool too. uses very little paint too. Alright, this one's in real time. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, dip it, mm -hmm. extra off, Good. Hang them up. Here's another quick tip for you. In between color changes, go ahead and empty this out back into the container for the powder paint, but then hit this with an air compressor or one of those compressed air dusters or something like that to clean it out. And look, that powder comes right out of there, so you can change colors real easy just with a little bit of compressed air. All right, now let's run some of those fire tiger jigs. Some of our biggest flounder last year came off of these color gulps, so we're going to make jig heads to match them. The main color for Fire Tiger is going to be chartreuse yellow. 
or chartreuse green. I think it's more yellow, but hell, I'm half colorblind. The complementing color is going to be high gloss orange. Remember, you don't want it to volcano too much. You just want it to be all fluffed up in there. And that's about a 25 count on the jig and the paint. Don't worry if you don't get all past that collar too far because it's going to be covered up anyway. I'm just trying to get those little specks on there that those grubs have on them. Oh, yeah, that's going to look good. Look at this thing. Wow. <laughs> that's going to look fantastic. really turning out looking great. So that is a great two-tone paint job that you can do yourself. Very easy to do and really going to set your baits apart from everybody else's to catch those big old fat flatties. Cannot wait to drag these things across our favorite wrecks. These take about a minute and 15 seconds start to finish to get that nice beautiful paint job you see there on it. Once you've got them all painted and situated on the rack, I'll slide that into our toaster oven. You guys may have a different arrangement than this, but you definitely need a way to hang your jigs in a toaster oven. Uh, you can do it in the oven in the kitchen if your wife doesn't get after you. But this does smell a little bit, so the garage or outdoors would be a better choice. You'll notice none of these are touching each other and none of them are touching the rack. They're a little close. There's a couple in the back that are close, but none of them are touching. That's what's important. So go ahead and carefully close your oven and we're going to set this thing at about 325 degrees ish we're going to do it for 30 minutes two cycles of 15 minutes to bake this powder coated paint on perfectly and when they're done and cooled off they're going to come out looking like this you got to let them cool off enough ouch, to pull them out <laughs> it's pretty close Woo. All right, I'd say they look pretty good. And we'll gently slide this batch on in there. Yeah. And same thing, about 320, 325, two cycles of 15 minutes. Don't cook them any hotter than 325. What happens is you'll end up discoloring the hooks, making them a little rusty. You cook the finish off of them, basically. So a little bit lower temperature, a little bit longer cook. 30 minutes at about 320. When you're trying to figure out how much this stuff's going to save you, that's how much paint we went through on 52 jigs, 2 ounce, an ounce and a half. So basically just a dent in each one of those jars of colors. The yellow was the primary, orange was the secondary for a fire tiger. So this powder paint goes a long way. All right, we got the jigs out here, and I'm going to show you guys something that can happen with powder paint. If you get a little bit too much on it, you'll get these little paint titties on there. And this stuff when it's baked on is hard as diamonds. So best thing you can do is just take a file and file that stuff right off of there. That's the best way to deal with it. It's pretty hard. It doesn't cut off any other way, at least not very well. If you've got it baked right, this stuff's just way too hard. 
So just file those down, shape them up a little bit. If you drip a little bit too much paint on there, that can happen. I only got two jigs out of 30 that have this on it on this one. So that's not too bad. That's not too shabby. Good to go. So that's how you paint up gorgeous looking jigs like this at home. Really easy to do. Barlow's Tackle has everything. Link to them down in the description below. All the paints, all the gear we used also down there in the description below. And up there in the cards is a link to the playlist with all of this jig making series in it. And if you're fishing wrecks or structure, believe me, this is going to save you guys a fortune. If you're fishing where the flounder live in the structure, in the rocks, you're going to lose a lot of jigs. It's just the way it is. We went through between 320 and 350 jigs last year alone, just flounder fishing on the wrecks and structure in the lower Chesapeake Bay, including Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. So if any of you guys watching this are divers and you find some of these jigs, you'll know them if you see them. Uh, you're welcome. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the playlist of all the rest of the series up there in the cards. Hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss any videos like this one. We'll see you next time. You plug in your little pump, which isn't freaking working. Oh, got to turn on the power. Jeez, childproof cap. <clears throat> Son of a... Oops. Look at that one. That almost looks weird. I ought to leave it like that. <laughs>